Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming to this event. And honestly, I don't need an excuse to come to Dallas. I'll just come down here for the food. Um, but it's great that I can meet all of you guys and a lot of enterprise uh, customers in this event. Um, thank you to the event organizers, Brain Exchange, for making all of this possible. Uh, this is an even bigger and better event than last year. So maybe we can have a brief round of applause for Jeff and Brain Exchange. What do you think? See, Jeff, I tried. <laughs> All right, so today I wanted to give some background about Third Eye and what's needed for a successful enterprise deployment and what we've seen in the smart glasses space and this enterprise space. The smart glasses landscape is really exciting. There's a lot of different players in this space, and there's a lot of differences between different smart glasses and different companies and what approaches work and which don't. So hopefully at the end of this presentation, there'll be a couple of new things learned about augmented reality smart glasses and what works for a successful deployment. So a brief background about who we are. Even though we may be a relatively new name for a, some of you in the audience, we have a lot of experience in this, in this space with over 20 plus years of Department of Defense technology development for the US government. We're one of the leaders in the smart glasses space, and one of our advantages of being an agile company is we can move a lot faster than, say, a larger company can. Our focus is on the commercial space. We have an entirely US-based team. We develop everything in Princeton, New Jersey, where we have our labs, and we have over 50 patents filed. So we're really excited about where we're seeing this market going for the smart glasses space. So I think we have a brief video to play. It showcases one of our use cases for the military just to provide some background about some of the technology development we've done. Um, so I think they'll play that now. Third has spun off from a US Department of Defense contractor that developed advanced technology ranging from laser rangefinders, AR optics, and augmented reality heads-up displays for the United States soldier. With 30 plus years experience in this area and over $1 billion in contract vehicle value one, our team has extensive experience in working with the highly demanding augmented reality use cases of the United States soldier. With over 50 patents filed in AR optics, hardware, firmware and software, and labeled one of the most advanced companies in the world by various industry research agencies. We are thoroughly recognized as industry leaders in the augmented reality space. One prime example of this technology we developed is the AR heads of a rifle pause display, which was developed to allow a soldier to look through a rifle scope with the AR glasses and get information on how to aim properly and take into account factors such as altitude, temperature, distance to target, weather conditions, and other factors that would allow the soldier to be more accurate and safe in the environment. This system was an example of an AR technology developed by our team that would help save soldiers' lives and showcased how we were able to develop advanced AR technology and take this know-how and bring it to the commercial sector. So, so that video, it showcases one brief example of one of the AR technologies we developed for the military, and we're really proud to support the US military. We're actively working with all the major three-letter agencies, and we're really proud, and we hope to continue supporting them for a long time. So we, using our military background, we developed our X2 MR glasses. And a great thing about mixed reality is it can be used across a wide range of in industries. It's not just restricted to in the industrial sector or manufacturing sector. It can be deployed across a wide range of use cases. So we're seeing a, some really great use cases from our software partners, as well as some of our enterprise needs. So, for a successful enterprise deployment, what features have we seen are needed for a great use case for AR technology? 
what capabilities, what technical features are needed in these classes to make it a worthwhile deployment. Perhaps the most important feedback we received is having a binocular field of view. Binocular field of view means you have two displays, one in front of each eye. It feels more natural to the human experience because as a human, you have nearly 210 degree field of view. So there's a lot of R&D happening in this space to make the field of view as wide as possible. So having a binocular field of view just feels more natural when you wear it. It feels more natural to the human experience. It means less eye strain, so you don't have to squint from your left or right eye. And we're working on some more certifications like the ISO 9241 health certification to make sure this is actually uh, capable in a healthcare certification. Another really important feature is having a hands-free UI. Roughly 80% of the global workforce uses their hands while they work. Most of your workers use their hands. So making sure that <clears throat> there are no tethered wires or packs and having the glasses be standalone and be entirely hands-free in, in terms of the user interface is absolutely critical. So this is another major fee feedback we received and that's why we designed our glasses in this manner. Having a hard hat connection is critical. The glasses can be as adva advanced as you want, but if it can't connect to a hard hat, for a lot of user use cases, it can be deployed. So we enabled our glasses to be connected to a hard hat and we're seeing some great feedback there. Built-in SLAM is a mixed reality feature where SLAM stands for simultaneous localiz localization and mapping. It's the same thing that self-driving cars have. It basically lets you understand where you are in your environment. So you can wear the glasses and have a hovering 3D engine or a machine part in front of you and walk around it, or you can map out information onto a specific target. So SLAM is really important for these more advanced mixed reality capabilities. And this is something that we're seeing is having a strong ROI in the enterprise space. Other sensors like a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, flashlight, a thermal sensor, these are all additional sensors that are great for enterprise use. And we built them all into the glasses and we're seeing some great use cases there. A built-in GPS for location-based tracking. So you can map out information to a specific geolocation for your use case, or have a software app that is based on in a specific GPS location. So that's another great feature. And being Android based and less than 2K in pricing. So Android is the most popular software platform. So it's e really easy for software developers to make applications. And less than 2K in pricing means it's deployable for a wide range of use cases. So these are just a few of the enterprise feedback we've seen is needed for a successful deployment of AR glasses. And there are other features too, but these are some of the main ones we've seen. So as most of you know, and as you walk around the show today, you'll see that the biggest difference in glasses is between monocular glasses and binocular glasses. And as an enterprise, it's hard to figure out which one suits your needs. So a monocular glass means there's a display in front of your either your left or right eye. It's great for displaying simple AR text. So if your use case requires just displaying textual information or number information, then a monocular pair of glasses is great for that. A binocular pair of glasses can do everything a monocular pair of glasses can do. It can do all the augmented reality features, but it can also do mixed reality. Mixed reality means you have built-in SLAM capabilities. So you have 3D tracking, you can render 3D content, you can overlay 3D information. For example, if you have a CAD drawing, you could go to an on-site location and overlay your CAD blueprint onto the real world and map it out within a few millimeters accuracy. So binocular glasses have a lot more use cases. It means a wider field of view, so it's more natural to human experience. And it can do everything a monocular pair of glasses can do as well as mixed reality. So it really depends on what your use case is. But what we're seeing for a lot of enterprise deployments is you start off with one use case. You might start off with, hey, I just want to do a pilot program with a simple use case. But as you start deploying, you'll come up with more and more ideas. You'll come up with more and more use cases. And a binocular pair of glasses, the built-in features allow you to deploy and create more applications and more possibilities for your use cases. So that's some pretty common feedback we've been receiving. And having built-in SLAM is just an additional feature that people have found really useful for different use cases. 
So this is an example of a manufacturing center from a monocular glass. So our biggest markets are manufacturing, industrial, healthcare. And a manufacturing field of view from a monocular glass means there's either a display in front of your right eye or your left eye, and you can get overlaid information there. So it's typically between 10 and 20 degrees field of view, and you can get whatever augmented reality overlay information you need there. In a binocular field of view, you have a lot more information you can display. You have nearly double or even more uh, field of view, about 40 to 50 degrees field of view. You can display a lot more information in front of each eye, and you can render 3D content and more uh, SLAM-based uh, augmented and mix of reality data. So this is just an example of how a worker would see their field of view from a monocular versus a binocular field of view. So what are the main reasons we've seen for different deployments in enterprise for monocular versus binocular deployments? So these four factors are definitely some of the biggest enterprise considerations we've seen when we're in discussions with different companies. So weight is a really big factor. So you want this to be something that you can wear and give to your worker to wear for a full workday. So a monocular pair of glasses have roughly half the weight of a binocular pair of glasses, but we've addressed this by making ours less than 10 ounces in weight. So it's something that can be worn for a full workday. A lot of binocular pair of glasses have a wired pack. A wired pack is a no-go for a lot of your enterprise use cases for safety reasons. So we address this by making RX2 entirely standalone. Price factor. A binocular pair of glasses have twice the optics of a monocular pair of glass, meaning it's usually twice as expensive or even more so. So we've addressed this by making ours less than 2K in pricing and affordable for large-scale deployments. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, industrial certifications. A monocular pair of glasses have a lot fewer electronic components, so it's easier to pass ANSI, ATEX, Class 1 Div 1 certifications that some of you need. Um, so usually binocular pair of glasses have wired packs and are really bulky, and it's just difficult to pass them. We've addressed this by, by making ours hard hat compatible, drop proof, and other industrial certifications certified. So our military expertise really allowed us to address these core factors that a lot of enterprise customers have mentioned as the main reasons why they choose a monocular pair of glasses. And I think this is something that we've seen has been really successful. So if someone asked how many AR or MR glasses have been out there, either in the market in the past, in the market now, coming into the market, that number is over 100 from the simplest pair of monocular glasses to the most advanced pair of binocular glasses that can do really advanced environment meshing, 3D scanning. But if someone asked how many of those hundred have a binocular field of view so it feels more natural to the human experience, an entirely hands-free UI so you can use your hands while you work, which is absolutely critical, built-in slam for 3D scanning and tracking so it's not just a display in front of your eyes, but you can actually interact with the real world environment less than a 10 ounce form factor so you can wear it for a full workday and less than a 2K price point, that number goes down from 100 to about two. And these features are what we've seen are needed for a successful enterprise deployment and for a successful broad range use case and something that achieves strong ROI. So one of the really important factors for a successful deployment that we've seen is the user interface. You want to make the user interface of these glasses as simple to use as a phone or tablet and to make this really widely deployed for enterprise. And perhaps the most important and like, most commonly used UI feature we've seen is speech audio. We have gaze controls, we have gesture controls, but speech controls on these wearable heads of displays just feels more natural because you're actually wearing them on your face. You can say a command like open flashlight, open instruction one. You can create your own custom commands for your own use cases. And you can have that data immediately appear as soon as you say the command. So we have a military grade speech recognition system built into our glasses with over 50 plus built in commands. And as a developer, you can make your own custom commands for uh, any of your use cases as well. And this is something that we've seen has been really popular for enterprise use. It can work within up to 90 decibels of sound so even if you're in a busy factory location, it can work and it can recognize your voice. And this is the most popular form of UI we've seen on these wearable glasses so far. And 
it's customizable, so if you like gaze or gestures, you can do those as well, but having a built-in audio system is absolutely critical for a lot of these enterprise deployments, and a lot of on-the-ground feedback has been that they really like uh, built-in speech commands. So it's just the most preferable way of UI we've seen so far, which is really great to see. So this is something that's really helped out for some enterprise deployments. So we have a brief video that showcases one of our industrial uh, use cases for uh, extra mixed reality glasses, and it basically showcases some of the SLAM capabilities and mixed reality capabilities for these glasses. Um, and I think it will showcase why mixed reality features are becoming more and more popular. The ScanEye platform allows field service professionals to create accurate 3D scans of any part of equipment and machines. Save the 3D scan as a CAD model directly into your database or email. Overlay step-by-step -step instructions onto a real-world device. For example, instructions on how to fix a specific machine. Visit thirdigen.com and contact sales at thirdigen.com for more info. So that's just one example of a mixed reality application where you can wear the glasses, look at any target object, and scan it into a 3D CAD model. And we're demoing that at our booth today. So if any of you want to check it out, we're happy to demo to you. But this is something that's capable with mixed reality features with built-in SLAM. You can render, you can create a 3D CAD model of any target object, and you can overlay instructions onto the 3D object. So it's something that's at the cutting edge of AR, MR, and it's something that's really valuable for training purposes and bringing people up to speed really quickly on how to work with a certain machine. So there are many possibilities, but this is one really uh, popular and, and advanced mixed reality application we've seen. So we went over the hardware features and what we've seen from the hardware perspective is needed for a successful AR, MR deployment. Then on the software side, what we like to call it is we have the Office, Excel, and PowerPoint of AR, MR. And as you walk around the show today, most of the software companies you'll be demoing with fall within one of these categories, either remote help, manufacturing warehouse checklist QR code scanning, or machine IoT. So remote help is someone can see what you see. You can bring a new worker up to speed by having a remote expert in the office somewhere. Someone's wearing the glasses, and you can see what you see and provide them live instructions. So it's a great training mechanism, and a lot of software companies are really great at that. Manufacturing warehouse checklist QR code scanning, this is something, instead of holding up a handheld scanner, you can walk around wearing a hands-free wearable device scan a QR code of a package or get instructions on where to put a package and improve the efficiency of warehouse and um, manufacturing a lot quicker. Machine IoT, 3D digital twins, this is at the cutting edge of AR, MR right now. This is where you can make a 3D model of any real world object and by having a 3D model of the real world object, you can map out information onto the object directly. So you can have like step one, step two, step three, just by looking at a machine, you can get live instructions on how to operate it. So this is more at the cutting edge of AR. So there's some really great software companies here um, today that are falling in, into one of these categories, and pretty much all their software works on our glasses. And there's some really great ROI we've seen, up to a 40% savings in task time using these different software features, and an ROI achieved within a couple of months. So we foresee that over the next few years, most of the software companies will fall within one of these categories, and these will become as popular for AR and MR as Office, Excel, PowerPoint, or, or for your laptop or computer. So these are some really valuable and uh, can achieve some strong ROI software features for AR and MR. So these are just a couple, few examples of some of the, our current partners we're in, in discussions with our clients. Um, as you can see, it's ranges from a wide range of industries, and that's the beauty of mixed reality is you can work in a wide range of industries and not just be restricted in a certain field. So some more features, uh, we have over 500 enterprise partners around the world across 20 industry sectors and in 20 countries, so we're really familiar with how to deal with your individual, individualized use case. 
Being Android-based, we have over a thousand software developers, so it's really easy to make apps on these glasses. And one really important feedback we received is roughly 80% of our deployments have preferred these dual-eye binocular glasses over a single-eye monocular pair of glasses. The reason being is it feels more natural, you can do more advanced SLAM features, and it's, that's some really great feedback we received. And our goal is to bring our military-grade technology to the enterprise world and really help achieve some of the use cases uh, that you're seeing. Some other features, technical features we include in glasses are a flashlight and thermal sensor. So believe it or not, a lot of glasses don't have these features and a flashlight is something that you just need uh, if you're working out in the outdoors um, in low lighting situations. So we have also have a thermal sensor where you can make a heat map of what you're looking at. So these are just some additional enterprise feedback we received and we included it into our glasses and it's received good feedback. So one of the most important features for a successful enterprise deployment is industrial certifications. Without industrial certifications, you can't get approval from within the company, um, especially if that's, if that's required. So we made ours hard hat certified and we work closely with different enterprise companies for their individualized needs. So we can work with you to develop a customized, ruggedized platform for your individual needs. Um, but we realized that having an industrial certification is absolutely needed. And typically, monocular glasses have industrial certifications because it's significantly easier to achieve them. And most binocular glasses with SLAM do not have that many industrial certifications. But we realized how important this is, and that's one of our main focuses, is achieving as many industrial certifications as possible and working closely with you to realize for your individual needs. So one other aspect for enterprise deployment we've seen has been really popular is having a leasing option. So an upfront cost for 500 or 1,000 of these glasses may not be feasible for a lot of enterprises. So we offered custom leasing options and we're seeing a lot of positive traction on that front. So instead of having it as a capital expenditure, you can have it as an operating expenditure and you can really deploy these in a much more uh, feasible and low cost manner. Um, so this is another aspect we have as an option and it's been received pretty well for, um, from different enterprises. One really important built-in feature that's needed for a large scale enterprise deployment is having a built-in device management software. So when you deploy these glasses, you want to have a way to control the Wi-Fi, the ability to remotely upda update them, to wipe them out, and this is something we've developed out of the box. So you just scan a QR code and then you can control the device and, and you can control a deployment across a wide enterprise deployment. Um, so this is absolutely critical for any large scale enterprise deployment, having a built-in device management software. And that's why we decided to develop it out of the box so it can be used um, and it can be effectively deployed quickly uh, out of the box. So software developers are really the lifeblood of hardware platforms like us. And most of the software platforms that you see today um, work on our glasses, being Android-based. We offer free developer support, um, reselling distribution, uh, a built-in app store. So we're really flexible for software developers to help them uh, deploy on our glasses. And we have some built-in technical advantages as well as pricing advantages. And we've seen some really positive feedback from software developers. And it's really great to see the great software developer companies at the show um, being able to add more features and deploy on hardware products like us. And it, it's like peanut butter and jelly. You just, just got to mesh really well with each other and then you'll see really successful deployments. So what's the next big step for these glasses? You see monocular glasses, binocular glasses. What's the next major, major step? From our perspective, it's adding a built-in cell network. Currently, no glasses in the market have a built-in 4G or 5G network. And for a lot of your enterprise use cases, you don't want to have a hotspot or connect to your phone. You just want to give these glasses out, go out in the field somewhere, and be able to connect with them. So we're actively working to integrate a cell network into our glasses, either a 4G LTE or a 5G network, which would enable extended battery life, facilitate miniaturization and really allow for a more seamless uh, display of mixed reality content and a lot of advantages having a built-in cell network. 
So we're actively working on this, and by this time next year, we hope to be the first glasses in the market with a built-in cell chip. And this is something that we've heard a lot of enterprise feedback as something that they need, and we um, are looking to do that. We also currently have a 5G partnership with a company called Insego, um, and we are demoing that at, at our booth where they have the smallest 5G hotspots, so you can just buy it with the extra glasses, slip it in your pocket, and get a cell connection anywhere you want. So if a cellular connection is something that's absolutely needed for your enterprise use, we have a solution for that currently un until we built it, in, built it in into our glasses. So um, we're actively working on getting a cell network built in. We know how important that is, and this is something that will facilitate even wider scale enterprise deployment. Um, it'll, it'll make life a lot easier for a lot of your use cases. So we went over the hardware features, the software aspects, the manufacturing, MDM, device management aspects, and the goal ultimately is we want to help your use cases. We want you to have as frictionless, as seamless of a deployment as possible, help you achieve ROI, and have buy-in from the people out in the field, the C-level executives who want to see ROI, the IT guys who had to imp implement the technology. We need buy-in from everyone, and we feel that with all those aspects we discussed today, having everything working together, and it took a lot of work, it took a lot of companies in this space to trial and error, um, but right now I think this is the perfect time that we're seeing really wide-scale enterprise deployments that are achieving really strong ROI. So within a few months of deployment, we're seeing that it's worthwhile to deploy these classes for your enterprise use cases. And there's a lot of features involved, and there's a lot of customization, but we're actively involved and we're always working back and forth with our enterprise partners and listening to them about what they want and trying to integrate it into our platform. So I think right now we're at a perfect time and there's these studies out there that show like over the next few years, over like 20 million headsets will be shipped out just for enterprise use cases. So there's been a lot, lot of lessons learned in this space, but I think the players that are here right now, this, from the software side and the hardware side, They've addressed a lot of the enterprise needs, and we're seeing some really strong ROI use cases, and it's ultimately helping your workers be safer in the field, be more efficient, and just improve the overall workflow of your enterprise tasks. And that's our goal, and that's what we're always working to do. So that's some background about who we are and what we feel is needed for this enterprise space. We're offering demos at booth 408, if any of you want to drop by, we're happy to offer you personalized demos. Um, and also, if any of you were so interested by this presentation and you want to join us, we're happy to have you join our third eye as well. So thank you for your time, and hopefully you learned a thing or two.